This is the first in a series of three videos describing the purpose and functionality of the USGS Sediment Data Portal. This first video focuses on the purpose of the portal and provides a brief introduction to the navigation of the portal. To get to the website that contains the portal, go to cedap.usgs.gov backslash sediment. And a, port, a report which describes the data contained within the portal and gives examples as to its use is located at pubs.usgs.gov backslash ds backslash 776. The portal has been designed to help folks interested in interpreting suspended sediment data better view, select, and download the data they need. Three types of data are contained within the portal. The first are discrete suspended sediment data. These data are results from samples collected from streams or rivers at a known date and time. More than 600,000 of these samples are available within the portal. The second are mean daily estimates of suspended sediment concentration and or load. More than 10,000 years of these data are available within the portal. The third are information on sampling site characteristics of discrete and or daily suspended sediment sampling sites. These data include information on the site itself, such as site name, latitude, longitude, and information on stream flow characteristics, but also characteristics of the upstream drainage, such as total drainage area, average precipitation, soil characteristics, or land use. There are some key features of the portal that we think will make it useful to folks trying to obtain and interpret suspended sediment data. The first are that suspended sediment sampling sites and data are represented through a map interface that has a variety of tools to help select sites of interest. The second are that only sites and data provided in the portal are those that were collected with the intention of representing the entire cross-section of stream and river sites. Thus, some data present in the USGS National Water Information System database are not included in the portal, such as quality control samples, samples collected at lakes, or samples collected at specific points in the stream cross-section. Also excluded are any sites with less than 15 samples. Another feature has to do with pairing streamflow data with discrete suspended sediment samples. Currently, many existing USGS discrete samples don't have corresponding information on streamflow conditions. For the portal, if streamflow data were not present for a particular sample, but were available as a daily or instantaneous time series, we match the time series data to the discrete sample on the same date or date time. Lastly, the portal provides easy access to available data related to suspended sediment, both for discrete samples, such as information on sediment grain size, water temperature, turbidity, and other data, as well as for, for sampling site characteristics. Now, let's go to a brief demonstration of the navigation of the portal. The sediment portal can be accessed by typing in ceda.usgs.gov backslash sediment. When you first get onto the portal site, a splash screen will pop up that shows a link to a quick start guide which provides some brief instructions as to how to navigate the site. Also, the, on the splash screen are a couple paragraphs. First is a, this first paragraph explains the purpose of the site that all of the discrete and daily suspended sediment data were originally obtained from the USGS National Water Information System, otherwise known as INWIS, and that all data present within INWIS may not be in the portal. Also provided is a link to a user guide, which is a more comprehensive version of the Quick Start Guide, and a paragraph that's a disclaimer. Click OK to get the splash screen to drop off. When you first get on the site, um, sometimes a situation will arise in which the sediment portal map and filtering options over here are relatively small for your browser window or too large for your browser window. To correct this, just go up to settings, either in Google Chrome, which is the browser we're in now, um, or in Firefox or Internet Explorer, and change the zoom settings. We'll zoom to 100%. That looks a little better. Okay, so the thing I wanted to note is that the uh, preferred browsers for the, the sediment portal are Google Chrome, Firefox, or Internet Explorer version 8 or newer. So you look at the portal, there are essentially two main parts of the portal. First is this map interface here, which shows blue and red dots, 
the blue dots correspond to discrete suspended sediment sampling sites. The red dots correspond to daily suspended sediment sampling sites. The size of the dots corresponds to the amount of data available. Over here is a legend that you can pop on or pop off. It indicates um, the, which dots are which. Um, over here are a series of zoom bars and panning tools. Um, and then over here are various data overlays. The other parts of the uh, website are these filtering options over here. And then once you enter any of these various filtering options, you can apply those filters, you can clear the filters, and once you've selected the sites you want, you can download data. Lastly, over here is information on help, which includes a quick start guide and the user guide that I mentioned earlier. And if you're having problems with the website, there is a link over here to Sediment Portal Help, which will pop up email, and you can email us any of, your pro any of the problems you're experiencing. So this first, uh, this first video here, I'm just going to mostly explain the navigation of the portal and the overlays. So looking at the map, if you want information on any of these dots, all you have to do is click on one or a series of these dots. And I'll just click, click up here. And any dots that I click on will be selected, and a site ID tool will pop up that shows the site name, the USGS stream gauge ID, the upstream drainage area of the site, and the period of record, whether it's discrete or daily. The sites I have here were only blue dots, so they have the, the years in which discrete sampling data were collected and the number of discrete samples. If you clicked on a red dot, you would get corresponding information for the daily sites. To get this pop-up to go away, just click outside somewhere where there aren't any dots. We'll just click out in the ocean here. Okay. So to zoom in or out from the map, you can use this zoom bar. So I'll click two levels out. And what you'll notice is that when you zoom in or out, the data reload. So depending upon your connection speed or depending upon the traffic on the portal website, this will happen sooner or more quickly or more slowly. In this case, it's happening relatively fast. But just know that that happens every time you zoom in or pan to a new portion of the map. What you can also tell here is that um, although the default zoom to the portal is the conterminous United States, we also have data for Puerto Rico, Alaska, Hawaii, and Guam. Okay, so let's zoom back in using the zoom bar. <coughs> so in addition to being able to zoom with the zoom bar, you can also double click to zoom into areas you want. So I'll double click here in Colorado, and I will keep double clicking further and further in. Okay, So this is a good way to, to get to zoom into the area that specifically that you want um, by using your mouse. Okay, and So when you see what you get in, the data continue to reload. Um, at some points in time, you may zoom in so far that you aren't sure where you are or you want to get back to the default zoom. And so in that case, all you have to do is go back up and hit refresh on your browser, and you'll come back to the original uh, original view of the conterminous United States with the splash screen. Okay, so the other ways you can zoom in or around data, or you can pan using these arrows, moving to the left or to the right, up or down. You can also left-click with your mouse and drag the map however you want. Um, so that's basically the overview of how to navigate the sites within the portal. So last thing I want to talk about in this video are the various data overlays. So we have some options for different base layers and then overlays behind the data. So this green and white map right now is behind the sediment sampling sites is called the topographic base layer. You can also look at a world image layer. So those are the, the base layer options. For the various data overlays we have, first one is called the National Land Cover Database, um, which is noted here as NLCD. This is land use and landscape information from 2006. And so you'll see there are different colors now that are displaying behind the sediment sampling sites. You can go down here and click on the NLCD legend, which shows what those colors correspond to. So at various uh, levels of development intensity, forest, uh, scrub and shrubland, grassland, uh, pasture, crops, etc. Just click back on the NLCD legend to get it to go off. You also have the option of highlighting states or counties within those states. 
you have the option of, of showing hydrologic unit code 8 watersheds. You have the option of looking at national hydrography data set flow lines, so you can see the location of streams or rivers uh, with respect to the sediment sampling sites. Uh, note that at this current zoom level, it's a relatively coarse display of the stream network. As you get in, or as you zoom in farther and farther, you will display smaller and smaller streams. You can look at uh, EPA uh, level 2 ecoregions. And you can look at the basin boundaries of any of the sediment sampling sites. You also have the option of viewing only daily sites or only discrete sites. Right now we're seeing only discrete sites, or you can look at only daily sites. And the last layer that's available is a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, data set that is, uh, shows the locations of dams in the United States called the National Inventory of Dams. And those are denoted by these sort of brown colored triangles. Note that some of these layers, including the USGS basin boundaries, the level two ecoregions, the hucks, and the states, will filter when you apply filters up above, especially um, specifically the boundary filters. So if you pick a specific basin boundary, only the basin boundary you, boundary you select will show up. And the same thing is true of the hucks and the ecoregions. So that concludes this first introductory video showing the purpose of the portal and the map interface. Thanks for attending this introduction to the USGS Sediment Data Portal. The next video will show how to select and download data for sites of interest using the various filtering tools provided by the portal.